Hey, speaking of ancient creatures, Joe Biden is riding high right now. He's, <laughs> according to a new CNN poll of Democratic voters, Biden is currently the number one choice uh, by a lot. He's 24 points ahead of his closest competitor, Bernie Sanders, who is in second place, which could mean a showdown between Biden and Bernie, which is exciting. You know, usually when a, a couple of 70-year-olds are in competition, <laughs> the winner is whoever yells bingo first. So this is... <laughs> Many believe Donald Trump is helping Joe Biden by tweeting about him and calling him Sleepy Joe. But Sleepy was up bright and early today on Good Morning America, where Robin Roberts asked if he has a motto. The president has a motto. Make America great again. Do you have one? Make America moral again. Which, okay, make America moral again is a nice sentiment, but it is uh, an absolutely terrible hat. It's... <laughs> it's Joe Mama. <laughs> Meanwhile, President Trump is uh, doing everything he can to hide his financial statements. He filed a lawsuit yesterday to block Deutsche Bank and Capital One from handing over his financial records to Congress. These are personal and business records that Congress issued subpoenas for. But, you know, the president, he, he, he treats subpoenas like they're wedding vows. He, they mean nothing to him. <laughs> The, the plaintiffs in the suit include Donald Trump, his daughter Ivanka, and his sons, Eric and DJ TJ. They're all suing together. <laughs> you know, some families go camping together, some play board games, others... Do you think Tiffany feels good or bad about being left out of the family lawsuit? I'm probably good, but... And by the way, suing your banks to keep them from sending your records to Congress, not a great look for a president of the United States. It's like suing your school to keep them from sending your parents your report card, which he definitely would have done if he thought of it back then. <laughs> this is quite a conundrum for the banks, who are now between a rock and a hard place, because it's illegal for them to ignore a subpoena, but they're also getting sued. So we got in touch with the Trump Family Foundation lawyer, and surprisingly, he agreed to answer questions, and he is with us from New York City right now. Please welcome Larry Harding, attorney at law. Hello, Larry. How you doing? Larry. Hello there, Jim. Hi there. Well, thank you for joining us. I really do appreciate it. And I have a few questions I'd... Hey, really uh, before love to... we start, I yeah. have to ask, are you uh, wearing a wire? Am I wearing a wire? This is airing on television. So... Oh, right. Sorry, force a habit, oh. I always ask. Okay. You never know, yeah. right? Yeah, anyway. Any um... who's it, what do you want to know? Well, I want to know why the Trump family is suing their banks and refusing to disclose their financial information, like every other well, president it's, does. Well, Jim, it's very simple, really. We just feel that some things are better left a mystery. <laughs> a mystery? That's right. A mystery is something you keep secret, something that remains unknown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, yeah, I know what a, a mystery is. Oh, great. OK, so you understand what I'm saying. Uh, and... no, no, not really, because the, the banks got subpoenaed by Congress, and you're telling them not to comply with the subpoena. Like, on what legal grounds can you do that? Legal grounds? This isn't about the law. It's about good old-fashioned manners. <laughs> Frankly, <laughs> when it comes to money, we just think it's impolite to pry. It's... It's gauche. It's, it's gauche? So gauche. Maybe even the gauchiest. OK, but, but what about the American people? Don't we have a right to know what our president is up to? No, of course not. You people... You people have a right to mind your own gosh darn beeswax. That's our motto, actually. We even put it on a sign. Oh. Isn't that terrific? Uh... Yeah, I guess, but I'm not sure that's going to hold up in court. Well, it might not, but I think my friends Abraham and George can be mighty persuasive. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to bribe the judge with $6? Uh, that's, just, that's just a down payment. Oh. Mr. Trump says he'll pay me the rest when he's out of office. Oh, OK, yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, should I ask? If you're a cop, <laughs> you know, you have to tell me if you're a cop. I know, I'm not a cop, so. Oh, good, okay. Okay, well, thank you, Larry. That's Larry Harding, the Trump family lawyer. Jimmy! Yes. Yes, Larry. Did I mention our motto? Yes, you did mention the motto, yes. Mind your own gosh darn Yeah, right. okay, well, thank you again. That's... That's Larry. Nice guy. Very nice man. This could be good news for Donald Trump. The Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said yesterday that Russia will continue to try to interfere in our elections for a long time. He said, 
we should expect that in 2050, the Russians will still be at it. And that makes sense. Of course the Russians want to meddle in our elections. The only other hobbies they have are uh, making beet soup and freezing to death. It's what they do. <laughs> Basically, it's Russia's goal to make sure America elects the worst pos possible person. And, and they knocked it out of the park. You really have to hand it to them. It's like, <laughs> it's like if, um, it's like if, if Coca-Cola tricked Pepsi into hiring Gary Busey as their CEO. <laughs> This is a weird one. Researchers at Oxford University believe that in 50 years, there could be more dead people on Facebook than live people. They predict that 1.4 billion Facebook users <laughs> will die before the end of the century, and their Facebook pages will not. They will they'll live on. Basically, Facebook is turning into an army of White Walkers, and <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg is the Night King. But I wonder when that happens, are we still going to have to wish all the dead people a happy birthday? <laughs> Right now, the place for dead people is Florida. You know, Florida is commonly known as God's waiting room. And last night, we had a, a great moment from this week in Florida. Tonight, we get another nugget from the Sunshine State. It's time for yet another edition of This Week in Florida. A man in Fort Walton Beach is accused of beating up a mattress. Deputies say his girlfriend was in the room. He thought she was cheating on him, and he attacked the mattress with a bedpost, ripping it open because he thought the man she was cheating on him with was inside the mattress. Akendo later admitted that he had been smoking meth. Oh, well, that's, you know, <laughs> at least he had a... It all makes sense when he explained it. Pope Francis, you know the Pope? You know the guy with the... Yeah. He is taking a stand on an unusual subject. The Pope yesterday addressed a group of barbers, stylists, and beauticians and warned them to avoid falling into the temptation of gossip. The Pope said, practice your profession in a Christian style, treating customers with kindness and courtesy, offering them a good word and encouragement. Well, that's no fun, is it? I mean, it's... <laughs> Did the Pope just spend the weekend binge-watching old episodes of The Andy Griffith Show? Why is this on his mind? It seems odd to me that he would talk about this, and I wondered what beauty professionals think of it. So I asked my longtime barber, Harry Stewart, to weigh in on this subject, and uh, I believe we have him standing by now. Oh, hey, Harry, how you doing? <laughs> Hello there, Jimmy. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Say, uh, you're looking a little shaggy. Trying to come in for a trim, you dirty hippie. Oh, come on now, Harry. I will do, but what did you think of the Pope's statement that barbers and stylists need to stop gossiping? Oh, I think His Holiness is absolutely right. I hate gossip. Oh, all right. You know, you know who used to love to gossip? Joan Rivers. And oh. look what happened to her. Oh, well, did you know Joan Rivers? Did I know Joan Rivers? Yeah, did you know Joan Rivers? I know everyone. Okay. <laughs> I've been stalling Hollywood's biggest stars for years. You've seen my wall of fame. Oh, yes, yes. Take us through that, because that is some... Oh, yeah. I love to. Here I am to start things off with Dr. Bill Cosby. Oh, wow. Haven't seen him in a while. Uh-huh. Oh, there's that CBS fella. Uh-huh, right. Me with Harvey Weinstein. Uh-huh. Oh, wow, how about that? Mr. R. Kelly. Oh, I love God. his music. <laughs> oh, and Kevin Spacey. <laughs> He's a friendly fella. Likes his hair nice and short, the way God cuts his hair. No. <laughs> and you know, Jimmy, if you get me that picture I keep asking you for, I got a nice spot for you right uh, here. You know what, Harry? I think I'll be fine without having my picture up on the wall. You know, you may want to take some of those down. <laughs> you are a hoot, Jimmy. Always <laughs> with the joke. No, I'm not really joking, but... <laughs> Harry, Harry, are you drinking the, uh, the stuff you sterilize the combs in? I sure do, Jimmy. It's called barbicide. <laughs> it packs quite a punch, let me tell you. <laughs> well, I, I don't know that you're supposed to be drinking that. Whoa, that's good. Uh -huh. it's my little piece of blue heaven. Oh, well, that's... <laughs> you know that song? Yeah, I do. I remember. But be careful with that. And I'm glad to see you're not gossiping. No, as sir, no gossip. Yeah. You know our motto, our shop motto? What is the shop motto? Mind your own gosh darn <laughs> All right. Well, okay, well. All right, well, you know what? I, I think that's very good advice, son. Thank you so much. Oh, hey, for... Jimmy. Yeah, what? Did yes. you know that... Elton John is a gay. <laughs> well, that's a, see, that's yes, I did, and that's gossip, Harry. That's exactly what the Pope is saying not to do. Yeah, no, okay. Well, thank you, Harry. That's my barber, Harry. He's, he's... 
Congratulations on making it to the end of the YouTube video. Why not celebrate by clicking the subscribe button? You earned it.